Hello, gamers. Since uh, since yesterday, let me let me tell you how yesterday went down. Twelve ish finished the stream. Twelve fifteen left the house. Twelve thirty picked up my daughter from daycare. Mm, say around one thirty cross the U.S. border. Kate had lunch. I had some leftover quesadilla before we left, so I was I was sitting there just uh, you know supervising. Um, had an interview to get my daughter a uh, a Nexus card, which uh, if you're not familiar is basically like TSA pre-check, but for you can also use it when you're driving across the border. The interview basically went like this: Hey, can we see some ID? Yes. Is this your daughter? Yes. How old is she? Two. Well, um, okay, you'll receive your card in the mail in about two weeks. Kind of the sort of thing that. Um, you probably could have done over Zoom rather than having to drive to a different country to do it. Just my two cents, but I understand. Um, the kind of general malaise that the genius possess and the insane lament. Then we were like, you know, while we're here, this is a bizarre errand, but we have to get a, a U.S. document notarized. The only way you can do it in Canada is by going to a U.S. embassy or consulate which is a little bit overkill. So we just went to a UPS in the United States of America where um, a lady who had done a course on how to be a notary said, can I see some ID? And then said, uh, okay, that is who you are. Now sign this while I watch. And so uh, we did that. The sort of thing that in my personal opinion could have been done on Zoom. I'm not trying to disrupt, like, the whole world, but at the same time, I feel like these are two things that shouldn't have necessarily necessitated all, all this CO2 emission. Uh, then, while we were in Washington, we said we should have dinner with our, with our family, our nieces, and, and uh, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law. They took me to Olive Garden. Well, really, we, they, they took us, but we paid. I'm not trying to make it like a... I'm, I'm not mad about it or anything. It was my pleasure. As soon as I knew we were eating at Olive Garden, I was like, you know, look, we might have been on the road and in the car for like five, six hours at this point, but at least I get an anecdote. I, one of my favorite things to do in the United States is go to restaurants that we don't have in Canada, but I've seen lots of ads for on TV, so I can now have a conversation starter. I, uh, I, let me tell you about my Olive Garden perception. I perceived that Olive Garden was horrendous. I thought that everybody who talked about it talked about it in the same breath as like Applebee's, where they said it's only fools go there. Um, when I ate there, I was like, this isn't, uh, this isn't too bad. I mean, considering that they, look, we went to the old spaghetti factory in Vancouver for our daughter's second birthday. That was god-awful. This was exactly the same, except every element of the meal was like, f probably four to five X better. Still worse than a normal, like, Italian restaurant, but substantially better than I expected, given the circumstance and the, and the, the bias that I had going in. I had some breadsticks. The breadsticks were pretty good. The salad was kind of sick with it, man. I'm, I'm, the, the number one thing that surprised me about the Olive Garden is that the unlimited salad comes with a vinaigrette instead of like a, a mayonnaise-based sauce or like a cream-based sauce. I thought for sure it would be like unlimited salad. By the way, it's ranch dressing. But the, the vinaigrette is sensible. That's reasonable. I thought the salad was pretty good. They do not skimp on the, the olives and the croutons. I, uh, I ordered, I made my own pasta because I looked at the menu and literally all of the like preconceived pastas were over, I would say 900 calories. I will say before ordering it, I didn't realize that it's, the portion size is too much for a normal human being to eat in a single sitting. So I, I get that it's a, it's like a two piece that you break up, but I got, uh, I got rigatoni with tomato marinara and some grilled chicken on top of it. And you know what? It was, it was completely fine. It was like a 5 out of 10. 
and not in a not in a bad way. I will say I'm still we're we're having quite a debate here. That is, uh, is it okay to put minestrone or to put Parmesan cheese on minestrone soup? Like it's crazy to me. I I thought it was the most garish thing I'd ever heard in my entire life. When the, when the salad came out, they said, sir, do you want some cheese on your salad? I said, okay, I'll take a little bit. They said, here's your minestrone soup, madam. Do you want some cheese on it? I was like, huh? Parmesan cheese in a, in a broth-based soup? It's not in a cream-based soup. Sure, I get it. But on a, in a broth-based soup, just a little cheese sitting there? It's a little... I, I thought it was a little... <laughs> Over the, it's like if they if they had asked like here's your diet coke sir do you want some pecorino romano on top of it? I thought it was one of the most in, insane culinary questions I've been asked this quarter, but uh, apparently it's pretty normal. Never mind. <laughs> and all in, dude, all in. It was like ninety bucks for uh, four adults and three kids you add a tip on top of that 92 dollars for for seven individuals to to eat a thousand calorie meal each that's pretty crazy america's crazy man i think i'm finally learning how to do america right the thing is again i i know i don't mind this just for humor it's, it's truth as well in canada we're stupid, and one meal is one meal. Like, it's what one adult human would like to eat in, uh, in a single sitting. In America, you could easily go and just be like, me and my wife will share one of these dishes, and they'll be like, that's fine, and then th three persons worth of food will come out, and you'll be like, oh my god. Under, it's under $20 for two adults to eat out. That's crazy. You got people, like, cleaning the bathroom. You got a whole, you got a free parking lot right outside of it. It's insane. Then you eat it all. Corey, I'm just telling you, I, all, I was driving. I mean, we probably put, if I had to guess, which I don't because we have an odometer, but I'm pretty sure I drove for 600 kilometers yesterday. So I was bored as hell. I still could only eat about 70% of my Olive Garden entree. And I have, uh, like, in some, I, I'm not a huge eater necessarily, but when dinner comes around, I have a pretty bottomless stomach. And I, at some point, I just, I ate all the chicken, and there was like, I don't even know, probably like 85 rigatoni left. And I just said, what am I doing with this? I'm full. I'm, uh, I, I, I'm eating for sport now in, in four hours. No, that was just the drive there, dummies. That's the fucked up thing about driving, is that the further you drive to get there, you got to do exactly that shit in reverse on the way back. So we came down, like we left our house at 12.15. We left Olive Garden at like, I don't even know, like 7, 7.15 or something like that. We didn't get home till 10. So that was like my, it was my whole, not just my, it was our whole day. It was nice that we knocked out two errands though. Did the baby sleep on the drive? Thankfully, she, she slept like an hour on the way down, and then she slept like an hour between the Nexus interview and the notary, and then she slept two hours on the drive back, and then when I put her to sleep last night, I read her one story, and I said, do you want another one? And she just said, no, and then she laid down on her stomach in the crib, and I was like, do you want me to tuck you in? And she said, yes, daddy. And then she just closed her eyes. It was the easiest bedtime I've ever had in my life. No. Yes. Traveling makes you tired. It's true. But can I, I listen, I'm not saying that being like a truck driver is like an easy job because I know that it's not. But like controversial, maybe like the most boomer opinion that I have. Driving's fun might not be the word, but driving is like the, it's satisfying. It's like the closest I get to meditating. 
Because, like, there's kids' music playing on the stereo to, to placate our baby. I'm just, like, it's it's the only time that I really get to just, like, stare straight ahead and have, like, my thoughts organize themselves in my head. Like, I, I drove the two and a half, three hours from Washington to, to Vancouver, like, just with, we don't talk about Bruno in the background, just, like, figuring my life out. It felt It felt nice when I got home. Like, I'm not saying I would be a, a great Uber driver, but I think I would enjoy the Uber driving part. I think I would absolutely loathe the part where people give you, like, the wrong pickup location or you're like, I'm here, and they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't know you'd be here so fast. I'll be out in five minutes. And you're like, bro, this is my time. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly getting paid oodles to be here, you know? Like, I, I'm on the clock right now. Or like, hey... Uh, can you take me from, like, my suburban house to the middle of a downtown city center where everything is, like, high traffic, no parking, you can't stop here, loading zone only, we will tow you on site, your safety's not guaranteed. Hey, could you just swing around the block and can you, could you just drive your Chevy Tahoe into this alley that's about six feet wide? Anyway, I think I would enjoy the, the driving part of it. Maybe that could be, like, my, my semi-retirement plan. I could be one of those guys who, like, runs an airport car service, picks people up at their house with their suitcases and drives them, like, an hour to the airport and then has a cup of coffee in the airport lounge and then repeats it, like, four times a day. That could be fun. I'll be listening to my own damn music, though. I'll tell you that much. No, I would rather not talk to them because I would rather not be talked to. Nobody, I, listen, if you're under the age of 45, you don't want to talk to your taxi driver or your Uber driver. And it's not a sense of superiority, like that the person is beneath you. It's just like, I'm on my way to the damn airport. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about my own stuff. Right? I, I don't want to make a friend right now. I know I'm a little monka s as well that um, the mods perma ban someone. When I do it, like I, I get it, but when a mod does it, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> now I'm looking through the <laughs> I'm looking through the the list of what they have said. I can understand. I, yeah, okay. I can absolutely understand why you would uh, why you would do that. Fair enough. It was a little weird. I love the first message is just babble, please, and then it just. No, I'm not gonna read it out loud. That's not. I don't have their permission. I can origin. I think I think you did something good. And you know what? If we maybe we'll see in the on ban request, it'll be like. Uh, Hey, I was just joking around. That would be good. If you're still watching past the permaban, that would be nice. If, if the unban request says, I was just joking, I didn't realize it was over the line, I would probably, you know, show a reasonable amount of clemency. Anyway, check this out. Someone made a website. I don't think they made it for us. I think it's just a happy accident. The website is called Movie to Movie. And it's exactly what... Um, well, not exactly, but it's pretty close to what Atrioc and I were doing on the, on the IMDb stream. And it has a daily challenge on it, which is like the, the, the best thing about it for sure. So this is movie to moviecom Don't kill the website yet. But let me, I, I thought this would be a nice way to like warm up on a, on a, on a daily basis, you know? So we got to get from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone to, to Batman 1989. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Harry Potter 1, I know, I know where I can go here, okay? And I, I'm not, I, I go for speed, I don't go for efficiency. So I'm not going for like three clicks. I'm going for like 
you, just ease of use, I guess. So here's my thinking, okay? Batman has Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson in it. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. I think it has Kim Basinger, but probably our best thing is going to be Michael Keaton to uh, or Jack Nicholson, okay? So we're going to work backwards from there, and we got Alan Rickman here. So we're going to get out of British movie with Alan Rickman to Bruce Willis, and somehow we're going to find ourselves at, at Michael Keaton or at uh, Jack Nicholson. It shouldn't be that hard. So we're going to, we're going to try the daily. So we're going to start... Oh, oh, I forgot we have to go through actors. Okay. So we're going to start with Alan Rickman. We're going to do... And, and you can use this filter here. We're going to do Alan Rickman Die Hard. We're going to use uh, Die Hard to get to Bruce Willis. Now we got to get to Michael Keaton. So I'm thinking a movie from the 90s that Bruce Willis was in. He's been in a lot of movies in the in the 2000s, the 2020s, which is is hard to sort through. I'm thinking Bruce Willis. I mean the the easy play would be to just go with Expendables of some sort. Let's go with Expendables 2. I'm trying to get to Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Or, or Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton was in the, you can't tell me that's not John Travolta. Michael Keaton was in the other guys with Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne The Rock Johnson was in Hobbs and Shaw with Jason Statham, who was, okay, so then we go, uh, 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 the other guys into Michael Keaton into Batman 1989. Time. That, now, that was farther than we needed to go. But I'm still happy with myself. Like, that's, that's, that's a pretty reasonable... Again, I don't... If you want to maximize for efficiency, if your Baba is you pilled, then by all means, go for it. Look Who's Talking has John Travolta and Bruce Willis. Okay. Why, what are we doing with John Travolta, though? What, where did John Travolta... What's John Travolta got to do with any of this? <laughs> I'm Batman. Joker, Joker, I'm Batman. John Travolta's Harry's classmate? You're thinking about Welcome Back, Potter. That's not Harry Potter. Look, I'm sure there's a faster way. I'm sure there's, there's an Oceans here. Because, like, Alan Rick... I don't know Alan Rickman's whole filmography okay it's it's got to be like you know i mean i know that he's in dogma as well i know that he's in like um love actually ah okay there you could get bruce willis to pulp fiction to christopher walken your father kept this watching as you know what to batman returns where he played the mayor to michael keaton the batman that's probably like like one or two steps faster if i had to guess I can't walk in. Your father, your uh, a mother, Michael Keaton was in Jackie Brown. Okay, which is directed by Quentin Tarantino, who also directed Pulp Fiction, who, which has John Travolta in it. But why the fuck are we constantly looping around the John Travolta? I don't understand. He has nothing to do with the game. The game is not get from point A to John Travolta. I don't understand why, why John Travolta is involved in every single one of these. Why aren't you moving on to the next one? Because they only have like one a day. And the rest we have to make up ourselves. But it's hard to make them up. It's a daily, a daily challenge. John Travolta was also in Greece. While true, so what? There's another website that does it. It's called... Hold on. Holly Woodle. Okay, let's let's go check out Holly Woodle. Holly Woodle. Hollywoodle.ml. Is it safe to, to, to go to a, an ML? Like why are they I guess I'm wondering why are they using ML? Is it HTTPS? Yeah. That's that's Malaysia. 
Okay, well, how to play. This is this is slightly different, but that doesn't different doesn't mean bad. In all cases, no offense, picky eaters. Um, why is Twitch in Tuvalu? You know what? I never thought about that. You got me on that one. Can you get from Christopher Plummer to Taylor Swift? Can you think of a movie starring Christopher Plummer and either Taylor Swift or another actor Taylor Swift has worked with? <laughs> Valentine's Day? Partial credit. Although Taylor Swift did act in Valentine's Day, Christopher Plummer did not. Okay. I need a hint from Christopher Plummer. One of the most famous movies he's acted in is the 2009 film The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. He played the character of Dr. Parnassus. Okay. The Imagine... The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Correct. Can you think... <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you think of another actor in the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus who also acted in a movie with Taylor Swift? Uh, Dustin Ho Why is... Dude, why is my caps lock on 100%? Incorrect. Dustin Hoffman was not even in the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Okay, all I know is Heath Ledger. Correct. He did act in the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Can you think of a movie starring Heath Ledger and either Taylor Swift or another actor Taylor Swift has worked with? Um, Brokeback Mountain. Because she probably worked with Jake Gyllenhaal. Let's do the 2005 version. Correct. Can you name, think of another actor in Brokeback Mountain? Yeah, someone comes to mind. Jake Gyllenhaal. Correct. Can you think of a movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal and either Taylor Swift or another actor Taylor Swift has worked with? No. He was also in the film Brothers. Okay, Brothers, 2009. I'll guess movie. Correct. Can you think of another actor in Brothers who starred in a movie with Taylor Swift? I, I, I can't tell who the actors are from the poster, okay? Get a hint. Natalie Portman. Okay. Um, Natalie Portman. Correct. Can you think of a movie starring Natalie Portman and Taylor Swift? New York, I Love You. Guess movie. Correct. Can you think of another actor in New York, I Love You, who also starred in a movie with Taylor Swift? What the hell? <laughs> it never ends, man. It never ends. Get a hint. Orlando Bloom. He played uh, David Cooler. Okay, I'm going to say it's Orlando Bloom. Okay, can you think of a movie starring Orlando Bloom and either Taylor Swift or another actor Taylor Swift has worked with? Yeah, um, Kingdom of Heaven. Correct. All right. Can you think of another actor in Kingdom of Heaven who also starred in a movie with Taylor Swift? Ed Norton. Correct. Can you think of a movie starring Ed Norton and either Taylor Swift or another actor Taylor Swift had, has worked with? Birdman. Correct. Can you think of another actor in Birdman who also starred in a movie with Taylor Swift? Am I just... He Get a hint. One of the most famous she's acted in was the, the movie The Giver. Okay. This... Bro, this is too much. Like, why... Maybe I'm a hater. Why does this not get it? Why does Natalie Portman to New York I Love You to Taylor Swift not just work if they were both in the movie together? She wasn't in New York, I Love You? Fuck. Okay, well, never mind. 
I don't know why I thought that. Um, so I want to get to Jeff Bridges. <sighs> okay, Birdman to... <laughs> Okay, well, ready? Birdman to Michael Keaton. I can do this. To John Travolta. Okay, Michael Keaton was in this. Michael Keaton was also in The Other Guys. Correct. With Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who was in Red Notice. With Ryan Reynolds who was in R.I.P.D. 1 with Jeff Bridges, Brioges, Jeff Bridges, who was in The Giver with Taylor Swift, who was, you were, who was, Cats, Cats pops up at the end? You were the first player to play that path today. What is this? I don't I don't understand. After I finish it, they just popped up uh they popped up cats. Oh here okay, here's your, your fastest possible play for the psychos amongst you. Two degrees of separation. Who knew? It's because cats was a bad movie and you did badly. I could accept that. Christopher Plummer to Knives Out to Michael Shannon to Amsterdam to Taylor Swift. Is Amsterdam that uh, David O. Russell movie that has every actor of all time but nobody liked it? Yes, okay. How about, what did I do, 10 degrees of separation? That sounds like me. They're always going to Amsterdam. Every, every single path goes through Amsterdam. Actually, this one's a little cleaner. Christopher Plummer to Knives Out to Daniel Craig to Skyfall to Judy Dench to Cats to Taylor Swift. That makes sense. Christopher Plummer to The Sound of Music 1965 to Julie Andrews to The Princess Diaries 2001 to Anne Hathaway to Valentine's Day to Taylor Swift. Wasn't, I, wasn't my ass on Valentine's Day? I thought I was on Valentine's Day. How did that not give me the win if they were, oh, because the first person that I mentioned was not in. I don't, I don't understand the, the, the rules of Hollywood. -el. Take me back to movie to movie, man. Anyway, let's do some Sporkle. It's a nice little warm up. That one, I, I think they got to work on their game design a little bit there. The, the UX, maybe. I think that's a good way to describe it. The UX, it's, it doesn't feel like the feedback that I'm getting makes the same sense that it does when it's on... They're, they're me okay, whatever. We're, it's all right. We'll just never do it again. Thanks for the suggestion. I'm joking. That being said, we will never do it again. But we'll do movie to movie again, for sure. <clears throat> What's the movie to movie link? Well, now I, I can't go back and do it on movie to movie because it's going to be... I know that we're just going to go Taylor Swift... No, Christopher Plummer, Knives Out, Michael Shannon, Amsterdam, Taylor Swift, the end. Guess the game where you have to guess the game from the screenshot. Okay, I'll try. Guess the game. Guess the game. Can you guess the book in three words? I think they got to work on their bubble sort on Sporkle.com. Can you guess who John Travolta is with? Guess the game is good, but it'll be easy for you. Guess the guess the guess what in three words. Just be close gaming edition. Guess who? You know what actually, okay, I I it, I typed guess the game and it didn't even figure it out. Like it wasn't on the first page. So how about this? Slash marker. Sporkle. 